But for our big picture Schwab panel, Colin Martin and Michelle Gibley join me. Colin's a fixed income strategist and Michelle is a director of international research. So Michelle, we've been talking so much Jerome today, but maybe we should talk a little Christine Lagarde as well. Uh, what did we get from the ECB chief? Yeah, the, she's actually just finishing up her speech at Jackson Hole. Uh, she hasn't said much new, but she reiterated that rates need to be restrictive for long enough to get to inflation back to 2%. And next week, we'll get a CPI reading out of the Eurozone. Um, it's the last one before the mid-September meeting for the ECB. The consensus is that both core and in headline inflation ease on a year-over-year -year basis. And the market is expecting that the ECB will pause in September for the first time. But it does sound like there might be some disagreement on the board. Um, some of them still want to hike. Uh, but reasons to pause would be that inflation has cooled, and really there are some signs of economic weakness. Uh, the PMI reading this uh, week came in at 47 for August, and that was led by weakness in services, which fell below 50 for the first time since December. Yeah, that number uh, kind of seemed like it went a little uh, overlooked this week, but was probably the cause of uh, at least uh, the short-term kind of movement we got in bonds that day. Those numbers came out. We had a little bit of a uh, rally back in, in treasuries. How big of a deal was that slipping below 50? Because I know some of those numbers were already below that level in contraction. Uh, were they not, Michelle? Well, you know, the, the services going below 50, like I said, it was the first time since December, but services okay. has been weakening in recent months, and that's not just in the Eurozone, that is across the globe. Mm. So Colin, uh, how do we kind of um, take away the net movement for bonds this week? We had a couple rallies, we had a couple sell-offs. It seems like the two-year breaking through to a fresh uh, high is maybe the big move of the week. What do you think? Yeah, it looks like the two-year was, was kind of the big winner in terms of where we saw the most movement, although we did see the 10-year Treasury earlier in the week hit a new uh, high since since 2007. The yields have ping-ponged a little bit. I think a lot of market participants were really just waiting for the Jackson Hole speeches to get a better understanding of where Fed policy might go over the next uh, few months and, and, and few quarters. Now, if you look at the initial reaction today, this is kind of similar to what we see a lot, where the minute we see an economic release or a Fed speech, you tend to see uh, yields kind of go all over the place, and then we get more of an understanding, a digestion of, of what's being told, what's the story that's being told. What we heard from Powell was really not much of a surprise. He basically explained his resolution and resolute status to, to bring inflation down. He highlighted that things are moving in the right direction. Um, inflation has been trending lower, but he made it clear that, that the job is not done just yet. And I think what's important, where well, we really saw yields start to move higher pretty much all across the curve, but especially with the two-year, where we saw that new high getting over 5.08%, was how he concluded his speech, where he said that, that we we're going to make sure we, we get the job done here. And if you look at the labor market and economic growth, he hinted that while it's moving in the right direction, if it comes in stronger than expected, more tightening uh, might be warranted. So for now, it doesn't look like he's itching to go higher, but he's letting us know that they will raise rates if need be. Now, that kind of in between, is that obviously bond bearish or bullish in your mind? Or is that, is Powell threading the needle, the, you know, the, the market equivalent of like a sideways trend? Or is him not hitting the break as hard? Does that kind of lead us to a default uh, path of growth? I mean, I guess that's kind of a neutral rates debate to some degree. Yeah, that's that's the million dollar question, Oliver. If if he was more resolute in hiking rates aggressively to to really bring down inflation and slow growth, that would probably be a bond bullish call. Bullish meaning that would pull yields lower and prices higher. But with the path they're taking right now, and and as he acknowledged, they're trying to figure out what the neutral rate is. With things going pretty well right now, and if the Fed can can either stay at its peak, if we're there now or hike one more time and hold there and with the expectation that there is a soft landing. Again, that's not our base case, but if that were to happen, that could be modestly bond bearish because in that situation, you could see intermediate and long-term yields drift a little bit higher 
and get closer uh, to that Fed funds target rate. It's not mm. our base case because we do think the Fed should succeed in bringing down insl- inflation at the expense of growth. But if we did get that magical soft landing, we could see intermediate and long-term yields drift a little bit higher. All right, well said. Uh, as we're trying to uh, dissect uh, what inputs might give us direction in the bond market, maybe we close by not forgetting about China, Michelle. They did make a few efforts to try and support their economy this week. Uh, would you describe them as stimulative? Well, you know, China is, uh, they don't have a lot of options at this point. And part of that is because of the past buildup of debt. Um, and so they, they eased uh, some home purchase rules last night, but the stocks were unable to maintain the balance because the details underwhelmed. The looser rules are gonna have a bigger impact on the four largest cities, which aren't really that weak right now. Um, they're, and they're a small portion of the overall market, but it's not gonna really help the smaller cities where the weakness is and which already have some of the looser rules. But so I think, you know, investors just need to get used to slower growth for longer in China. And again, that's because they uh, they have a lot of large numbers. They're four times bigger than they were in 2007. They have uh, built up debt and the property market, you know, the fundamentals for the property market ha- were slowing before the pandemic even started. So that's gonna be a drag on 20 to 30% of GDP. Mm, wow, okay. Um- Love the details there. Appreciate it, guys. Nice uh, combo and a good wrap for the week that includes some subjects that uh, kind of fell under our radar a little bit there with China and uh, the ECB, too, with all of our myopic focus on Jerome Powell and bonds here at home. Thanks, guys, for keeping us balanced to Colin Martin and Michelle Gibley.